The search for better solutions is not ending, and it's inevitable that gas-powered engines will be a thing of the past. So a lot of you might ask, what is a custom builder to do in the future? Hey everyone, Kevin here, and thanks for watching this video in our Bottom Line series where we focus on everything having to do with uh, custom lower trucks. And for those of you that haven't watched any of our previous videos, uh, one thing I can tell you is that uh, I like going fast in trucks, and uh, big powerful engines always bring a smile to my face, and uh, they've also given us a scare from time to time. I love the power from a good old V8, and to be honest, the sound that comes from them really sets a tone for a fun time. Uh, today, I'm at Old Anvil Speed Shop. Uh, as hot rod shops like this really excite me and all the possibilities there are for dropping uh, big engines into uh, various vehicles. And as you can see behind me, there's a uh, old international uh, pickup truck and it's got a supercharged LS on here. It's got a slam suspension. It also has, as you can see, uh, some Nitto tires for the wind as well. But for many shops like this and many folks, uh, dropping in a big V8 into a vehicle is pretty much the American dream. It's as American as apple pie, but that could all be changing soon. Unless you've somehow been living under a rock for the past couple of years, uh, you would know there's a big push to find uh, alternative uh, vehicle fuels for cars. And I'm not here to get all political on you, but I do believe that um, we need to look after our world for future generations. Uh, and this is a subject that's not going away. As the powers that be are really intensifying their efforts uh, to have other uh, zero emission vehicles uh, to offer to the public. Over the past few years, the EPA has really gotten serious about policing uh, companies that sell products that uh, defeat emission systems on vehicles. And they've gone as far as uh, stocking companies, rating offices, uh, to find these violations, and if they find anything, anybody guilty, uh, they have been fining uh, companies uh, pretty much uh, per unit sold. So uh, these things, these cases can add up really quick. So it, it's a real serious deal. Hell, I even lost a gig over it. I, I uh, did some promotion for a company that um, was in kind of a gray area and they decided not to put themselves out there as much and wanted to stay under the radar. Uh, so we ended things, but I'm not crying here. I'm not losing sleep or anything like that because I understand the big picture. The search for better solutions is not ending and it's inevitable that gas powered engines will be a thing of the past. Honestly, uh, I think we need to accept this change and just move on. Uh, for us here in California, uh, the governor is, um, or has banned uh, the sale of new gas-powered vehicles uh, starting in 2035, and uh, other states are following suit as well. So a lot of you might ask, what is a custom builder to do in the future? Now, as far as I know, gas engines won't be completely outlawed, but um, they are banning the sale of new units. But uh, so what this could mean is that um, resale values could go up and builders could see a surge in uh, prices and, and just business. So that could be kind of good for everybody. But the problem I do see is that if there's uh, less need for uh, gas or less demand, uh, gas stations could close up, prices could go up. So as you can see, there could easily be a snowball effect to this all. Obviously, the big push is to replace uh, gas vehicles with electric power vehicles. Though Tesla has been uh, at the forefront of all this, Chevrolet and Ford have uh, made offerings as well to show they are committed to the future. And I, to be honest, um, I, I was a bit pushed off of, about all of this. It rubbed me the wrong way, as most hot rods are with uh, gasoline running through their veins uh, would be as well. I mean, can you really enjoy life without big thumping engines? Uh, drop a comment below for your thoughts. And while you're at it, uh, hit that like button and subscribe button as well. All right, back to our video's topic. Uh, like I said, I was turned off to electric uh, engine conversions at first until I was educated on some of the benefits of them, uh, like the uh, amount of power that's instantly available. It's like turning on a switch with these things. Also, uh, there's a uh, very minimal maintenance uh, required for them. So that means engines have a lot of longevity uh, with them as well. So as you can see with all these benefits, um, there's lots of potential you can unlock with uh, having a conversion like that. When Chevrolet introduced the E10 uh, zero emissions truck at the 2019 SEMA show, I was really excited to see something in this direction. Um, at, first of all, I mean, like they, they used a first gen C10 platform. And so it was really cool to see them use that um, to show kind of, you know, what, what we can do in the future, you know, with vintage trucks or anything that you have. Uh, but uh, if you looked underneath the hood, there was a uh, electric crate engine and in the bed was a uh, battery pack that uh, powered everything. And so it was a little bit of a disappointment because basically the whole bed was battery pack and you had no room for luggage. All you could haul was another person. Now, I think the SEMA show is a good gauge for um, what's going on in the future. And this year I ran across a company called Legacy EV, which basically uh, takes electric engines and retrofits them to uh, any old vehicle. 
When I talked to the representatives of the company, uh, they told me that they were looking for a vehicle to display at this year's show. And when they did, they locked their sights on a uh, 71 C10 as they were looking to rival Chevrolet's E10. As the project came to an end, they were able to make this truck uh, have 300 horsepower and 450 pounds of torque and also have a uh, 200 mile range on a single charge. What I found out is that they uh, hid the engines underneath the truck and uh, stored the battery packs in, in a small box in the bed, uh, which left a lot of room still for uh, carrying cargo and everything. And so up front, the engine compartment was com completely empty and they created a frunk, which is basically a truck up, trunk up front. Uh, so it just went to display uh, some of the capabilities, uh, or some of the things that are a little bit different, uh, what you can do with a project uh, that has an electric conversion. Though I like traditional V8s and um, it really took a lot of time for me to not oppose electric conversions anymore. Um, seeing projects like this, I was, it was really able to broaden my horizons and appreciate uh, what, can, what can be done with uh, vehicles like this project. There's a lot of benefits to electric, and uh, you know it, it does prove it's, it's innovative and it's something fun uh, for us to uh, tinker with and everything. But I don't think it's a solution for the future, as uh, a big issue is with the mining and disposal of the lithium for the batteries, and that can have negative effects on the world. The other problem I have with this topic is uh, the sourcing and delivery of electricity as well, as uh, we're still burning coal to get a, a majority of our electricity as well. So what that means is like uh, a lot of people that have, you know, may say, hey, their vehicle has zero emissions at their tailpipe or on their vehicle, but that doesn't mean that there's not uh, emissions coming from somewhere else. The other problem comes from the infrastructure of delivering the power itself as um, we're already overloaded as it is uh, and adding a boom of electric vehicles charging all the time uh, would create a, a, a or cause a big toll on all of this. Uh, and here in California, we already have issues in the summertime when people are running AC where we have blackouts all the time. Uh, recently in Texas, there was a severe winter storm uh, that knocked out their power grade. There was a, a lot of issues. Uh, there were some fatalities as well. And so it, it really puts a question mark to me on whether this is, this is a solution for the future. So where does this all leave us? I'll tell you, uh, the uh, search for alternative fuel engine uh, conversions, I think is the future, even though they don't get the support that they uh, deserve. Uh, I follow Formula One racing and I know that uh, Shell has partnered up with Ferrari uh, to create a net zero carbon footprint by uh, 20, uh, 2030. And they're doing this by uh, uh, making synthetic fuels and also the use of hydrogen. Speaking of uh, hydrogen, we found another interesting vehicle at this year's SEMA show, uh, which was uh, Arrington Performance's uh, Project Zero uh, 48 Chevy, which uh, had a hydrogen conversion. By working with Redline Oils and Bosch, they were able to create a fuel system to power an unassuming uh, supercharged 6.2 liter LS3. And what they, uh, from what they told us, uh, this alternative fuel burns uh, more efficiently and has very little emissions uh, that would include NO2 and a little bit of water as well. Because it was at the SEMA show that we saw this vehicle, we weren't actually able to hear it run, uh, so we can't prove any of this stuff. Uh, but the team did actually send us a, a short little clip, um, which was all that they were able to provide before the, uh, the true launch of this prototype vehicle. So uh, we are fortunate to get that so we can hear that and uh, be able to verify that it does tickle the senses. What I find most exciting about Arrington's truck is that uh, it has a traditional combustion engine uh, with a modern alternative fuel conversion, proving that we can keep these engines uh, if we convert them to uh, solve our problems. And uh, the best part, I think, is that um, when these things come alive, our senses are fulfilled uh, when we hear the rumble of the exhaust. Now, we're not sure if the production of hydrogen for these conversions uh, will create pollution in itself, but uh, from what it sounds like, Philip 66, the owner of Redline Oils, is committed to reducing carbon emissions um, themselves and are even um, looking to find ways to uh, keep the production green as well. While we're all wrapping our head around trying to find a solution to all these issues, Chevrolet went off the deep end by offering a 632 cubic inch big block V8 uh, with 1,000 horsepower. Now, I don't know what the thinking is, or maybe the folks at Chevrolet can see far into the future and see the benefits of uh, hydrogen and can prove that uh, we can keep these engines as long as we do them smarter. Now, talking about head scratchers, we even came across an LS swap Tesla at the SEMA show. Now, if this isn't a middle finger to the man, I don't know what is. But uh, in the spirit of hot rodding, I absolutely love seeing things like this. Well, everyone, I hope this video was a bit of an eye opener to what we could see in the future for custom vehicles. And if you enjoyed this one, please smash that like button as it helps us create videos in the future. And I want to hear your opinions about uh, all the stuff I talked about in this video. So feel free to drop that stuff in the comment section below. And don't miss a single video in the future by hitting that subscribe button and turning on post notifications. 
and we will catch you next time. Thanks for watching Driving Line. If you guys like this video, consider subscribing to our channel so you'll never miss any of the content we create here. Whether you're into trucks, Jeeps, imports, domestic vehicles, or anything in between, we are here to fuel your passion. So hit that subscribe button and we'll see you guys next time.